Hi everyone, this is Shelly with Life Creates Art and thank you so much for joining us again on part two of Back to Basics. How are you all doing? How are you all holding up there? Now remember the reason we're going to Back to Basics here today, we're gonna to be working on value and we're stepping back a little bit even though I've been painting for 28 years. So stepping back a little bit during this time that we're all in our homes and we are taking a look at maybe learning things that you've never learned before. And that's kind of what art is all about too, is learning things that you've never learned before. So let's take a look at value. We're talking about not the value we hold in things, which I hope you're holding your family and your friends. Uh, I hope you're valuing them right now. I hope you're valuing the nurses and the, the doctors and everyone that's out there, the, even the grocery store people. But we're not talking about that kind of value. We're talking about value as it comes to, as it relates to art. And value means how light or how dark a, a color appears. So when we're talking about value, it can really hold a huge impact on your art. It makes a huge impact. Last week we talked about colors. Colors also, your color choices, they do make a huge impact. But if you don't have, bring in that value, which is the light and the dark, then really you have just one of those uh, you, you see those, you remember those pictures that they have that where you look at it and it vibrates, your eyes kind of vibrate and it looks like the, the picture is actually vibrating. And what that is, is the different values in that piece of art are so similar and so repetitive, your brain can't figure it out. So there, there, there's this light pink and then there's a, just a slightly lighter pink, but it's in this pattern. And so it looks like your brain doesn't know what to focus on. So it's just, it looks like it's vibrating and that's all in your brain. But value brings in a substance. So it defines form and it separates objects. And that's what we're trying to do. Now we talked about the psychedelic paintings. Now the dark painting is, let me show you this one. Now we talked about color again. I want to show you this painting now. It doesn't have a lot of color, does it? It doesn't have a whole lot of color in it. However, you can definitely see the dark and the light values that are in that painting. And let me show you one that I did. And this is pretty clear of what I was trying to accomplish. So these are, this is when you're working with values. So I worked with the darkness of sadness and depression and the heaviness. And then I worked with bringing in that light and that color of hope. See, it stirs up an emotion, value can. And it separates figures, it defines them. But it also stirs and tells a story. So here I have the depressed one, and then I have the one that is actually wrapping their arms and their legs around them and creating some sort of light and brightness for this person, letting them know that they are being held and they are taken care of. So last week we did a color scale. This week, we're going to talk about doing a gray scale because we are talking about defining the dark and the light value. Best advice I can give you when it comes to learning how to do value, which is very important. If you've never done this before, then it's so important that you do it. Even if you've been painting for a lot of years, step back and do these practices because it will help advance your art. And so, and that's what we're doing right now when we're stepping back here in life. A lot of things with art pertain to life. We're stepping back and we're taking a look at our life and seeing where we can advance and move forward and things we don't need and things that we need. And so value, when you're talking about that, we're, we did a color scale last week. Gray scale is so important to practice and do also. And that way you know the different tones. Whoops, my paint was so wet. Uh, you know the different tones. I started with white and I moved up just 10% and I went to the black. We're gonna work on this. We're gonna paint this crystal 
and we're just going to work on value. I'm not really concerned about creating a painting of a crystal. I just want to show you how to bring things out to create value, create structure. And we'll be talking more about structure and things like that later. But uh, shading will come next week. But this is about just seeing the dark and the lights. I also have other photos I want to show you that have to do with that. Now, the first one I want to show you is my favorite, Bob's Big Boy. And this is the importance of value. This is why we have to talk about this. We have to learn this before we do it, because I want you to see what the importance of value is. Bob's Big Boy is here. You see him in color. And then we switch it. And now you see Bob in black and white. What you're aware of now, though, as you hold the two up next to one another, what you're aware of now is that in the color picture, with it, it's all those colors and your eyes are drawn lots of different places, that you don't really see the, the shading and the, the dark and where those come in to make Bob a 3D figure. So now we have the black and white and we can really define the areas is under his neck and there's a little shading from the, the, the sign that stands next to him. We can really see some of the shadows around him and we can actually make out the two people walking behind him a little bit better when we take out the color and we see that value. Another picture. Here is the color photo of my husband, handsome man, and it's a real close up and clearly the sun is coming from one side. So you want to, you have those really definitive shades of light and dark on his face. Now that's a color picture. When you turn it to black and white, you can really define where the value is and how to make his face, if you're going to paint that, uh, jump off of your canvas and, and become a 3D figure on your canvas and value is so important for that. So let's get started with painting. We're gonna paint this crystal and let's get started. Well, we are back and what we're doing here is, I'm in, I painted this canvas in two different colors. Next week, we'll be working on this side and we will be doing shading. This week, we're working on just the value of this crystal. And you can see this is a multifaceted crystal. It's got lots of neat lines and lots of reflections in different places. And we are just acknowledging how to separate those and make them come off of your canvas, help them to look 3D off of your canvas. And so I have this purple section. I will paint a little bit around that in just a little bit. But first, I'm going to just sort of sketch out the crystal. Now, again, I'm not looking for a lot of uh, detailed perfection here. We are just trying to acknowledge the values. And I'm kind of going off of the canvas here, which is not so great. But now we've got about six different facets here. What we're going to be doing now, I'm going to be using a large brush, a thick brush, because I don't really want things to be too detailed. You just want to get the capture the value uh, right now. And so we're going to start with the darkest part of the value. And we're going to bring in this dark part here. Now, you, you notice that this is the darkest section here. This also is dark. And here we have a lot of uh, mid-tones. And we need to just add, we use our grayscale and add more white as we do that. But we're just going to start with getting defining some of our darker ones. And we'll be dealing with uh, shading next week and how to shade things. This is kind of an odd corner over here. 
of squares off. We've got some more down here. We're just laying down our dark tones. That's all we're doing. So now I'm going to take my colors and I'm going to start bringing in some of the darker tones. So here's where we you just get things down. And fortunately, I'm working with acrylics so I can work a little faster because it's, I know it's going to dry. And if I need if I make a mistake, I need I can cover it. That's why I love, love, love acrylics. And again, we're just getting some of those other tones down here onto the painting. I'm going to try to not really blend them right now, but just getting things down on the canvas. Now let's bring in some of the stronger white. You can see right here this line that separates these things. So we're going to bring in a pretty strong white line right there. And it's going to cut across and sharp. And don't be afraid to bring in, in especially in your details, don't be afraid to bring in. I do have yellow, um, the little bit of the purple on my uh, palette here to sort of combine some of these tones. I've got some blue also to sort of combine things and bring out a little bit of color. You're doing black and white, so you're focused mostly on the, the tones. I'm going to do this little triangle here. Okay, rinsing my brush. Now I'm going to bring in more of this line because that's more of a solid, that solid white. Okay. I'm going to have to use a little bit of a smaller brush here, I think. Bringing in again some of the mid-tones here on the outside. Remember, I'm not really concerned right now with making a, a great painting that I'm going to put on my website or anything like that. Not really looking at that. I'm just looking at doing a black, pretty much a black and white painting to get practice with a uh, tone and value and really understand value. Oh, I got that wrong. There's a little triangle right there. I'm just trying to change the value there. And this is the, the best thing that I, the best advice that I can give to you is pay attention. Just pay attention, go outside, pay attention to how light hits things because light's gonna come in at a different angle. We'll talk more about that on shadowing. And it's going to come in at a different angle and it's going to affect things differently. Go outside, pay attention, take some pictures, pay attention to how light hits different objects and how it reacts to these different objects. And then you can really begin to understand tone. Now we have a really definitive line here between these two. And we have a definitive line here. All right, so now I'm going to try to work on that mid-tone section there because it is more of a white in the center, but here it's not solid white. Oopsie, went a little too far. So again, we you continue to work with this. You continue to uh, just look at your object and really see where the defining marks are. Pay attention. I haven't been paying a whole lot of attention, I have to say, because 
But some of the paintings that I do are more in a line of character work. And so it require it really, it not requires, but I like to outline that kind of work. And it, outlining is pretty much good just for when you're doing that sort of cartoon character work. It's good for that. But you really want that separation. For example, I'm going to show you here. So I'm going to take my colors here and I use this purple. I'm just going to kind of cover it, just loosely cover it with the lighter shade. So now I need to define my crystal. How am I going to do that? Without drawing distinct black lines. If you want something a little more realistic, then You don't want to have those black lines. Now, see with this, I'm going to come right up against that crystal with this bright white. Come right up against the crystal. And again, I'm going to bring my white all the way down. easier for me to work with it like this. It really changes things when you work with black and white and black and white only. So I suggest that you practice this, practice with your values and paint a painting with black and white and pay attention to those values and how they're affecting your the piece that you're drawing. So now I've got this these lines and I kind of lost my crystal here. Normally I wouldn't stick with a light background to with a crystal, but I really kind of wanted to define my crystal now. So what I'm going to do is rather than use a black line, I'm going to pull in some of these more defining marks here and define them even more. I'm going to, I think I'm going to add a little, just to add a little color here, add some blue to this and change it up a little bit. And this is where you come in and you make more details in your painting. I could work on this for hours and hours and hours, just making sure that everything is perfect. I could make it a painting that I could sell on my website. But for this purpose, that's not what I'm doing. So really defining those things. It's a little more white along here. See, I need practice at this. It's something that I need a lot of practice at. So you guys get the idea uh, of what we're doing here just practicing your tone, your tonality, and where those colors are really coming from and where the light is sitting. We'll be talking more about that, talking more about paying attention to that sort of thing as we move forward into shading. But this really gives you an idea of tone and how to work with it and what areas that you need to work on. Pay attention.
recognize where these areas are so that you can more define your artwork and bring it out, have it jump out onto the page. I will show you a picture of a painting that I did of my father years and years ago. And that painting, I could never get it figured out because it was so frustrating to me because I could never really get it to jump out on the page. It just seemed like my father was just flat. Always so flat. That's because back then, I didn't really understand this process. So it's very, it's, it's valuable to know your value because your painting will depend on the values that you bring to your artwork. And it's so important that you understand value and what it brings to your art. And like I said, I can continue to correct, make corrections and work on this for hours. In fact, I probably will uh, just because uh, it gives me good practice to, to really see where I need to define and all of that. But it gives you an idea of value and the importance of it. Now, uh, next week, we're going to be talking about shading and how light hits an object and how to actually detail out the shading. So you guys, again, continue to play with this and I probably will for a little while now. Uh, and uh, just really watching where my tones are, but you get the idea, do something in black and white and that will help you really see your tones. Don't forget to also be seeing your family, seeing where everybody is at emotionally, checking in and making sure because sometimes uh, teenagers that are going through this thing can maybe not communicate real well about their feelings. So be sure that you're checking in with them and making sure that they're doing okay. Call somebody that you know. Uh, the value, excuse me, the value is very, very important to your painting. It helps to make it a real thing. It helps to jump off the page and not make it a flat 2D uh, figure. So I, I hope you do this. Make your grayscales and you guys just have some fun doing this and don't for, don't get all stressed out. I'm getting all, I found myself getting all stressed out about this. And really that's not what it's about. This is not about creating a great painting. This is about practicing your value. So you are valuable to me and I hope you all are doing well and I will see you next week. Next week we will talk about part three of Back to Basics, which is shading. And I love you all and I hope you're doing well and let me know how you're doing uh, in the comments below and make sure you're okay. All right. Bye.